Well, looky here, we have something on the bench. Oh boy, it's one of those solder together kits. TDA 7293. Here is the kit unpackaged. I'll take my meter and test as many components as I can. Here's the board. I get a focus on that. Seems to be of good quality. Double sided, plated through holes. One thing I noticed about the resistors, they have the normal thickness tin plated copper leads instead of the real thin tin plated steel leads. The leads do not stick to the magnet. That's interesting. Usually they give you the cheap crappy resistors. I'm not sure if I can get a focus on that. But it says fine gold. Ooh. Fancy schmancy. Audio foolery. Okay, we'll take a look at the data sheet. I'll get these parts checked out. And I'll get this kit soldered together. And we'll go from there. Well, here is the information. Stretch that out a little bit. 120 volt, 100 watt DMOS audio amplifier. The DMOS just means it has MOSFET output transistors. It's a diffused metal oxide semiconductor, I think it stands for. 100 watts, yeah, right. Of course, it's 100 watts at 10% uh, distortion, it says. That's the problem with ST. They kind of bloat their numbers a bit. I mean, it, yeah, it does, but who really wants to sit and listen to music at 10% distortion? And let's see, this is probably a big data sheet. Here are some specs if you want to pause and take a look at it. Works with 4 ohm loads. That's good. Here is the distortion. It's very good distortion. Let me see if I can bring that up for you there. That's, uh, that's 0.1% and it's under that, even at 20 kilohertz. Maybe goes above it a little bit right here, but you know, that's at near the maximum power. At 1 kilohertz, we're your ears are most sensitive to it. It dips under 0.01% distortion. Excellent. And what do we have over here? Okay, this is 8 ohms. This was 4 ohms. This is 8 ohms. Of course, it's easier for an amplifier to drive 8 ohm load, so your distortion is even lower. Look, it dips down below 0 0.005. This is a really, really nice specced chip. But yeah, if you want to look at the data sheet anymore, just Google it. I'm going to go ahead and complete the amplifier. So here is the amplifier. All put together. I'm not going to clean the flux off just for this it's just for you know I bought this just to make a video so I'm not going to clean the flux off and you probably would want to flood fill the uh, these traces here they left them blank so you can put solder on them but the traces are so wide and thick anyway I don't think it's necessary okay now I need to put it on a heat sink and get some wires connected and power it up for the first time. See what this thing can do. Okay, it's all heat synced and wired up. As usual, it comes through the preamp from the music player. Running it at 50 volts right now, plus or minus 25. 
can crank it up when I'm doing power measurements. Now, um, one issue I'm going to have with 8 ohm loads, you know, I can crank this thing up to 40 volts, even higher. But, of course, this does not go that high. However, they're recommending you run this at 4 ohms. Uh, I think it's plus minus 29 volts. And we can go over that a little bit with this. So if we can get good numbers with 4 ohm loads, we can extrapolate the 8 ohm power. Because 4 ohms is definitely going to draw more current from the amplifier. And, you know, it'll allow us to be certain we can get um, decent power at 8 ohms. Well, I'd like to play that, but I have to uh, find my YouTube safe music. Stand by. Sounds good to my ears. And of course it depends on how the camera interprets it to, for what you hear and all the YouTube compression. But it sounds good to my ears. Draw us 40 milliamps. Crank it all the way up. 32 vol 64 volts total. 32. 40 milliamps is the quiescent current draw. So it's, it's not, not too bad at all. Well, time to hook up some resistors and get some power measurements. Okay, we have the 8 ohm load connected to the output, scoping right at the load. And we'll play our test signal. What happened? There we go. I have it preset. So we're putting 21.2 volts. There is our pilot signal our 1% reference that's built into the original signal and there's really no distortion there's clipping and the distortion is just you know it's below what I can measure there's not much there maybe a couple little blips there but nothing serious now I gotta stop that because that resistor is sinking some decent power there. I put it on a heat sink. Ooh, I got hot. This is a pretty large heat sink. It's not very hot. But we had 21.2 volts, I think it was, squared divided by 8. 56 watts. Now again, that is because I am limited. I can't really go up to its 35 volt. I have a transformer, but even it doesn't go that high. Plus, it'd be harder to get a good measurement because the voltage changes as you load down the output of the transformer. Okay, I'll take a couple more measurements at 8 ohms, jot them down, and do some 4 ohm measurements. I popped it! No, just kidding. Okay, I got the 4 ohm loads connected and full voltage I can set on this power supply. And it's 32 volts per rail, 60 vo 64 volts total. And I got this all set up. 19.2 volts. And I'll turn that off. Excellent distortion, nothing. This thing is clean power. Okay. So I said 19.2 volts RMS squared divided by 4. 92 watts! Alright, and that is 92 watts of clean power. Very clean power. So we are pushing it beyond the data sheet. It was 29 volts per rail. Uh, what is that? 58 volts total. 
So we took it up to 64 volts and and we got 92 watts out of it of nice clean power. All right, I'll go ahead with the rest of the measurements and uh, put it in a spreadsheet and come back. And here are the results. These numbers here are the RMS voltage measurements from the scope, which I used to calculate the output wattage here in the spreadsheet. This is the supply voltage. Again, this is the total supply voltage. So if you see 40 volts, it's actually plus or minus 20 volts and so on and so forth. So at 40 volts, 8 ohm loads, I got about 22 watts and 38 watts at 4 ohm loads. And so on and so forth, down to the maximum voltage setting on the power supply, in which I got 56 watts at 8 ohms and 92 watts at 4 ohms. And again, that's clean, undistorted power. No 10% distortion or any crap like that. Excellent, very good. And here is the graph. This is the 4 ohm and 8 ohm measurements. I took a ruler and carefully measured and extrapolated out the power at plus and minus 40 volt supply with the 8 ohm load and I come up with around 83 watts. I think that's doable with that chip. And here's some final notes I scribbled down. This is the eBay seller. The boards cost $6 and a couple bucks to ship. So you should be able to find them in around that price range. Again, the quiescent current was 40 milliamps. One thing this amplifier lacked, which I like to see on any audio amplifier, is a low-pass RF filter on the input. And, of course, you could still add that if you wanted. It has a very good layout. The board's laid out quite nicely. You have the film caps across the supply rails oriented very close to the IC. The, the uh, ground planes look good. You know, I didn't check all the component values and everything against the data sheet, but as far as the ground layout, you know, they seem to have separated it. Uh, the signal, small signal and power ground is very good. And it's a nice, compact, small board. You are going to need a decent sized heat sink because of the power this thing can make. Seems to have authentic components. I did check the wire trimmings from the resistors. It is copper core and the chip does seem to be authentic. And, uh, you know, the fake ones, they use smaller die, and there's no way I'd get that kind of power. So this thing is excellent. I give it a thumbs up. Highly recommended. And that's it. Thanks for watching.